Hello, hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to another episode of Unapologetically Abundant Podcast. And I am so personally excited for our today's guest, Nina Kamil, because I truly believe that she is such a beautiful embodiment of what it looks like when you live in full self-expression, in the freedom and inspiring other people along the way. People, leaders, visionaries who are joining her journey and are rising up so they can be even more empowered, even more free and creating a beautiful legacy in the world. So I'm super excited to have you today. Mm, Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And before we dive in today's episode, I love starting with a short meditation. Hence, that's why I was asking you the Lola question. So if you're open to that, I would love to start with a short guided meditation where I would be guiding you. Great. Beautiful. So just find a comfort in your chair. You can just lean back, fully relax. Nothing will be required from you. Really find a comfort, um, settling in, nestling in, gently closing your eyes and starting to take a few deep breaths just to recenter, coming to this beautiful present moment, slowing down, melting into everythingness and nothingness, and feeling your body softening, your chest and belly slowly rising and falling, and with each fall, with each outbreath, you're feeling more and more relaxed. And as your body and mind are slowly relaxing, I would love for you to visualize a beautiful morning in a tropical warm weather. You're sitting in a beautiful front porch, listening to the birds, sipping on your favorite drink. There are flowers blooming everywhere. You can sense the breeze in your hair and the flowers, essence, sweet. And you're feeling very, very relaxed, fully present, fully alive. And as you're sitting there and just relaxing and appreciating what is, you plan for yourself a day that is going to be your dream day. I'm curious, what would you be doing in that day if you can do anything? And it will be truly a day that you finish it and you said, I live my sole purpose. What would you fill the day with? What would you do? And if it's not a secret, you can share it with us. What do you see yourself doing? I would be free diving. Oh, that is so beautiful. And I feel like free diving sounds like so much more fun than sitting here in front of the microphone and screen, but I would gently invite you slowly coming back at your own time, whenever you're ready. How are you feeling? Good. Beautiful. And I love that. And and it's so fascinating, like free diving. I feel like everything about you, it's really about like full self-expression of self and freedom. And I'm curious, like, how did you create this freedom in your life? I feel like so many people are so afraid to express themselves, to be themselves, to really create the freedom. What was it for you? Like, when, when did you like felt that deep desire for freedom? What was your journey? Yeah, I feel that. Freedom has always been something that is deeply important to me. I kind of came into this world a tiny little adventurer and pretty unstoppable. 
Mm. Uh, I was raised as an only child and my mom actually had a lot of friends. And so from a very young age, I was making friends with lots of adults and animals and anyone I could because there just weren't really many kids around. Uh, I also grew up in a lot of chaos, not intense chaos, but just inconsistency where I didn't have, you know, a normal upbringing for a child. And so I learned to take care of myself and kind of do my own thing from a really young age. And so my family vacations were my parents taking me to the casino and I would run around by myself and go to the arcade and make friends with strangers. And I was always just this really bold, very independent child. And I think a lot of that was fueled by the fact that I was an only child and nothing about my upbringing was traditional. And uh, as I got older, I could sense a little bit more and more that my mom was in a lot of physical pain. She drank a lot. She was never visibly intoxicated to me, but she also became less and less present as I got older. And so by the time I was capable of taking care of myself, like when I was a teenager, I really had to mm. and so from a very young age, like my lunch was never packed for me. My laundry was rarely done for me. I did all of those things myself and taught myself how to, you know, do the things that I needed. And so when I became an actual adult, it was kind of like I had grown up so fast that now I finally had permission to really go out and create the life that I wanted to create. And for me, a lot of it was based around experience. You know, I'm a classic Sagittarius female. I want to see the whole world. I love philosophy and learning through direct experience. And so freedom has always been of utmost importance. And the ability to go after big dreams really comes from that feeling of self-trust mm -hmm. where I've always been able to take care of myself because I had to, and that's not going to change anytime now. And so being able to take risks in my life as an adult has felt safer because I learned how to take care of myself from a pretty young age. Hmm. Thank you for sharing that story, you know, and I believe that a lot of listeners who are listening now can like find themselves in a bits and pieces of your story, you know, and how it's it's so beautiful how you were able really to to like transmute it, right? Like someone can make it as something like a bitter and you just got the best out of it. I'm independent, I'm strong, I'm confident, you know, and I feel like when people are around you or when they're witnessing you in your element, um, they can really feel that and they can get inspired, right, by what is possible. So I'm wondering where in your journey did you discover this desire to empower others to do the same, to create the freedom? Because I feel like for you, the freedom was more of when you were growing up, it was more of like a survivor, right? Now you're not in survivor, hopefully, <laughs> Not sure where you are, but doesn't feel like to me. Um, so now you're not in a survivor. Now you're really in a place of like, I'm leaving a legacy. I'm inspiring and supporting other people to create the freedom. So it's a different kind of freedom. So what inspired you to be helping other people with the freedom? And also, what does really freedom mean? Like, what does it mean to you? I feel like every person can describe it differently. Mm, yeah. I would say that freedom to me is the capacity to be with the fullness of my human experience and the experiences of others and to feel safe. Mm, that's uh, beautiful. Yeah. And so, you know, I've always been a very natural teacher and leader. That was just something I noticed even as I was going through college, there was a way that I could articulate something that would allow for someone to understand it better than if professors had. And so often throughout college and all my classes, there would be someone teaching something and then there would be me leaning over and reteaching it to people. And the response was always, oh, okay, now it makes sense. Wow. And so there's something about me that is a distiller. You know, I have a, an ability to catch a lot of awareness and to distill it down into small nuggets that are actually chewable for people. Um, I can simplify things very easily and things naturally simplify in my mind when they come through. I can kind of 
slice out the fluff and get to what's really important very quickly. And so, you know, I had my own journey of getting likability in the world, also stemming from being an only child. I learned very quickly that I really wanted friends. And because I wanted to avoid my home environment, I played the game of getting people to like me for a very long time. And so it wasn't really until I got my heart broken for the first time, like no one had ever broken up with me. And I was with this man that I was deeply in love with. I was living in the Caribbean. And when he ended our relationship, the way that he loved me was more powerful than I had ever loved myself. And so when he left, it felt like I lost a limb. Like I felt like all the love in the world went away when he left. And that really set me on the journey of learning to actually love myself. And I'm so grateful to him because he gave me a new template for what that would look like. Um, and luckily we're still very, very close and it's been eight years. Uh, and once I went on that journey of actually learning what it meant to truly love myself, not just conceptually, but in action, like to truly take choices that were honoring and reverent of me and my body and who I am as a being and to discover what my authentic truth even was, because I had been performing likability for such a long time. If you had asked me, who are you really back then? I would have no idea. I just knew what people liked about me and I knew how to play up those qualities. And I felt trapped by that, but I didn't realize there was another way. And so once I really woke up and learned to appreciate myself and to forgive myself and to connect more deeply with other people and learn to trust other people, which is a challenging thing if you grow up hyper independent and you really take care of yourself. Connection can be a challenge, even if it looks like you're great at connection. There's often this tiny part of us that does not trust that anyone is going to show up other than myself. And so when I really did the work of excavating all of that and truly letting people in in a way that was actually vulnerable and deep and discovering intimacy with myself and with others, you know, even platonic intimacy, that's when I really felt like I had climbed to the top of the mountain and I was like, oh my gosh, there are so many people in my world who have no idea how much easier life can be and how much more enjoyable it can be when we really connect to our true selves and how exhausting it is to perform for the love that we think we're missing. And so because I knew I'm a natural teacher, I was in a place where I was like, okay, how am I going to articulate this? How am I going to give this back? Because once we accomplish or unlock some codes in life, the first thing most of us want to do is share them. We want everyone to know like, hey, you guys, there's a better way. Come <laughs> over here. Um and I was lucky enough to already have a pretty significant following on social media. I had been sharing a lot about yoga and my personal journey through grief and transformation. And by the time I had put together something of value, uh, I actually went through a death of my best friend and chosen brother. And the way that I navigated that, I was sharing it pretty publicly and people started reaching out to me and saying, wow, you have something figured out and I would really like to learn from you because I'm having a really hard time processing this death and this loss. And it was people who actually grew up with him and knew him also that reached out and said, can you help me? Because I just don't know how to move through life and everything you're writing is just let landing for me and so powerfully. And I kind of giggled because we joke now that Brandon, my brother that passed actually started my business for me. Um, and it just really grew from there. I realized how capable I was to listen and to hear what people might need and to help them create it for themselves and each other. And it's really been like the biggest love of my life since. Mm. Isn't it so fascinating when we look back in our life that some of the like most challenging events in our life are literally the biggest teachers. It's, it's so Again, I really want to honor you for not sitting in it alone and locking yourself from the world because that's sometimes what people do and that's what sometimes people think that will make it better. And I feel like we get to give ourselves space to go and feel whatever we're going through, but then really ask ourselves like, 
if I experience this, who else could experience this? And how can I share this experience in a way that can be empowering and inspiring to other people and help other people? Because so often we feel like we are going through things alone. And like you said, like there were so many people who started to reach out to you because of your authenticity and vulnerability. I'm really curious, you know, how, like, what were some of the steps or tools, or if you can still remember, what did you do to allow yourself to trust others? I feel like it's, it's, you know, like I experienced it myself on my journey. Like I was the one who I can always count on and then trusting others was challenging because you're like, well, I don't want to get hurt again. I don't want to get betrayed again. I don't want to get left behind again. So what were some of the things that help you trust others? Mm. Yeah, this has been a theme lately because it is that sneaky place in us that keeps us separate when really all we want is connection, you know, all the time. That's part of what we're here for. And it can be terrifying if we've been let down by people who were supposed to show up for us, like our parents, to open our hearts again and to let people in. So there were a few things that needed to happen. And I will say this is something that I really had to learn and practice over time. Um, I've always had incredible friends and I also wasn't really letting them in all the way or trusting them uh, until moments where I had to. And so there are some things I intentionally did. And there were also some pretty major events that took me out so hard that I had no choice, but to ask for help. And it was in those moments that I realized how deeply those people wanted to show up for me and how willing they were to be there. And that really shook me awake in the realm of connection. But as far as, you know, what we can do to cultivate the ability to trust others, the first thing I did was learn to trust myself. You know, it was learn to actually trust my own truth and to touch on the truth of my own innocence. Because one of the things that was really scary for me when I was an adolescent was the idea of me hurting someone else was terrifying to me because I was afraid that they would leave. And, you know, if you zoom out from that type of dynamic, it usually is because we leave when people hurt us, right? That's like a projection. And I had to learn the hard way that there were people in my life who were afraid to tell me that I hurt them because they thought that I would take it so personal that I couldn't handle it. And so when I learned that, I realized that it's so important that we learn to love each other imperfectly. And that if you're going to be in any deep connection, you will be let down and you will let someone down because you're a person. And there are people who have been let down who now are walking around the world waiting for the perfect person to trust again. I, I'm going to find the person that will never let me down and then I'll trust them. And if you do that, you're never going to trust anyone because everybody has the capacity to let you down unintentionally and innocently. And so when I was willing to forgive myself for the moments I had accidentally hurt people I love when I had dropped the ball or I didn't see what they needed and I couldn't show up to it, I really started to understand, oh, if my intention was to love this person, but I failed at it and they were hurt by me, that means that when people hurt me, they probably actually meant to love me. They just didn't know how, or they didn't have the capacity, or I didn't express what I needed. And so really understanding that deep connection allows for imperfection and to just forgive each other and to really look at the truth of our hearts and our relating. Uh, human relating is a, a mess. Like we're a mess. We're just this like collection of experiences. We trigger each other. We rub each other the wrong way, but we also really love each other and we want to connect deeply. And if we just allow that to be the case where human relating is kind of messy and that's what makes it beautiful, then everything becomes more easy. And it doesn't feel like this risking of my whole life to trust someone and open my heart again. It is just a part of the human experience to love each other and know that like, yeah, you might get hurt 
and you'll survive it because you've survived every other time that you've gotten hurt and every other time you've gotten hurt, it was probably worth it. So, you know, really learning to be authentic as well is what allows you to find the people who will navigate conflict alongside you and who will move through life with you and not abandon ship the moment something gets tense or challenging, right? That's part of relationship is repair. And so if you're willing to stay and others are willing to stay because you're in your truth and you're doing that from a place of connection and compassion and understanding, it becomes easier and it feels more safe. Mm -hmm. And you already know that if that person drops you, you have you. Mm. Mm. So powerful and, and really very moving, you know, because it all comes back to you. Like, yes, you can trust others and you get to trust yourself first and not looking for perfection, not looking for the easy way out. Like it has to be perfect and easy or it's not right. Like you said, like human experience and ask, like we are messy and, and like each of us has like, million puzzle pieces inside of us you know we are trying to click it with others so it's really beautiful and you know I know you have a lot of travel ahead of you um you know like you said a beautiful travel of Sagittarius so with all the travels what are you the most excited for like this year what is lining up for you what is what is really exciting you the most these days mm. Yeah, I hadn't been back to the United States in quite some time, actually. And the thing that has been most rich for me is connecting with all of my beautiful friends and family and their children that are growing. Mm -hmm. I've been living in the Hawaiian Islands for a while, and it's very remote and so amazing. The life there is absolute magic. But now that I am traveling a little bit more, I get to visit the people that I truly care about and love and be in this dynamic exchange of energy when I'm around more people. Mm. Uh, I don't really love me a remote tropical island, but there's something really incredible in the work that I do when I'm around larger groups of people and I can actually feel and sense what are people facing right now in their life? What medicine is most necessary for them? What wisdom do we need collectively? And uh, yeah, being in a transition phase of exploration and connection and, and freedom was more of a theme for me when I was younger. Um, and so it's interesting to revisit that lifestyle even briefly uh, as I'm much more grounded in myself and who I am. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm excited about running my programs this year. I'm very excited that we get to go back to Bali this year. I used to run most of my retreats in Bali. That was I kind of- it. Yeah, our retreat home until the, you know, global situation happened. And now we get to go back. And that is just such a huge gift because it's such a home to me and to the work that I do. You know, Bali has really held me and held my business in beautiful waves. I've spent a lot of time there. And the idea that we get to return and I get to bring a new group of humans to this incredibly powerful, potent, magical place and be a shepherd in that way feels like a deep honor. Mm, I'm so excited for you. We hosted retreat in uh, Bali too, and I miss it because, you know, we were not able to travel and this year we won't be able to travel again. Like now Bali it's open, but we can travel right now, you know, so I'm really happy for you. I will live vigorously through your stories and through your um, freedom account. So for those who want to connect with you, learn more about your programs, maybe join you on a beautiful Mama Bali, you know, what is the best place to connect with you? Yeah, I really love Instagram as a platform of connection. I spend plenty of time there and connecting with people and sharing my life. Uh, in a way that feels really fun for me. So you can find me on Instagram and send me a voice note or a message. I'm a real person. So, you know, <laughs> I respond to literally everything anyone ever sends me on there. And I really enjoy using that as a place to actually build authentic connection and meet people in person and have it be like a tool for making our lives more rich. Uh, and then if you're curious about experience freedom, my programs, you can check those out also on Instagram, but we have a website as well. It is experiencefreedom.co. Um, and I'm sure you'll share our Instagram handles, but mine is at it's Nina Camille. So I-T-S-N-I-N-A 
C-A-M-I-L-L-E. Spell much better than me. Lucky that <laughs> I didn't do that. Lucky that we didn't do that. Nina, thank you so much for being here today and also for inspiring other people what is possible to do when they are really living authentically from their soul, when they learn to trust themselves, self-express and create a life of freedom that it's truly rich. Thank you. Mm, thank you.